The Life of St. George. St. George, the great miracle worker and martyr of the Orthodox Church, lived in the latter part of the third century AD, during Diocletian's reign of the Roman Empire. St. George was a Cappadocian Roman and was raised by pious Christian parents. When Diocletian started his persecution against the Christians, St. George, an elite soldier in the Roman army, declared himself to be a Christian and thus refused to worship the false idols of the pagan empire. He suffered many tortures because of his belief, but never considered renouncing it, counting it an honor to suffer for Christ's sake. The life of St. George is a prime example of a life that each Christian must follow to obtain salvation. For, as the Philokalia teaches us, salvation comes only through martyrdom, whether red, green, or white. St. George the Great Martyr was raised in the Christian religion, and George's own father was himself martyred for his faith. After his father's death, George's mother took him to the Holy Land, where she owned a farm. George served in the Roman army from a young age under the Emperor Diocletian and was commended many times for his excellent service to the empire. From the rule of Emperor Decian until 284 AD, when Diocletian became emperor, the early Christian church went through a period of peace and prosperity. During that time, the Christians obtained important positions in the government, built many churches and schools, and continued to organize the hierarchical structure of the church. Diocletian gave many of his loyal officers political positions in order to keep the support of the military men of his empire always on his side. This was important, given the infighting of which the Roman nobility were often guilty. After Diocletian had suppressed the barbarian tribes, which were attacking the empire, and having secured its borders, he began to concentrate on the empire's internal affairs. Diocletian believed that a state religion could keep an empire united. As paganism was the state religion, Diocletian focused his efforts toward the suppression of Christianity and the exaltation of the pagan gods. In the year 303 AD, Diocletian summoned his aides to meet in Caesarea in the Roman Empire. He held three general meetings with his aides, instructing them to persecute the Christians. St. George, who had displayed his matchless excellence while serving in the army, was among these aides. Diocletian asked them to pledge their allegiance to this cause by making pagan sacrifices as proof of their loyalty. All of the aides pledged their loyalty, except for St. George. He stood in front of Diocletian and professed his belief in Christianity telling the monarch of the Christian teachings and the holiness of the crucified Savior from Nazareth. The emperor ordered that this Christian rebel be taken to prison and that a boulder be placed on his chest as a form of torture. The next morning, Diocletian ordered that the prisoner be brought before him for questioning. St. George was steadfast and told Diocletian of his faith in the riches of the kingdom of heaven, his eternal reward in Jesus Christ, the Lord. The emperor then summoned the executioners to take the saint, commanding that he should be bound to the rim of a wheel set with sharp spikes. Diocletian admired the courage of the saint 
and asked him to sacrifice to the gods to save himself. He refused Diocletian's request and welcomed the chance to accomplish his martyrdom for Christ, following the example of his father. While at prayer, St. George heard a voice from heaven saying, George, do not be afraid, for I am with thee. By a miracle of God, the spiked wheel had no effect whatsoever upon the holy body of St. George. When the saint appeared before Diocletian, not only was he unharmed, but an angelic halo of the uncreated light of the Holy Ghost had settled about him. Suddenly, two officers of the Roman army, Anatolius and Protoleon, appeared before Diocletian with 2,000 soldiers. They confessed their faith in Christ, and Diocletian had them all executed, making them all martyr saints of the Orthodox Church. The emperor then ordered his soldiers to dig a pit and fill it with lime. The saint was then drenched with water and thrown into the pit. The water and lime were meant to slowly dissolve the saint's body. After three days, Diocletian instructed the soldiers to clear the pit. To the surprise of the soldiers and the shock of the emperor, St. George sat at the bottom of the pit, unharmed. Diocletian demanded to know what type of magic George had used to escape his fate. George answered that he had not used any magic, but that he had been saved by the power of Christ our God. The emperor then ordered that iron sandals be tied to the feet of the saint and that he be forced to run. As he ran, he was beaten. One of Diocletian's advisors, Magnentius, ordered George to perform a miracle. They happened to pass by a tomb of a man who had been dead for many years. Magnentius ordered George to resurrect this man from the dead to show the power of his God. After praying for a long time, he rolled the rock away from the tomb and resurrected the dead man. The bystanders praised the power and strength of Jesus Christ, our God. Diocletian asked the resurrected man who he was and when he had died. He told Diocletian that he had lived before Christ, had come on the earth, and because he was an idolater, he had burned in the fires of hell all those years. Many idolaters were converted to Christianity because of this great miracle. Among the people who glorified God and St. George at the tomb was a farmer named Glycerius. Previously, St. George had resurrected this farmer's oxen from the dead, which were his livelihood. Because the farmer was so outspoken about this miracle of St. George, the soldiers murdered him, and thus he too received the crown of martyrdom. The next day, Diocletian met with his nobleman to determine St. George's fate. They decided to beat the saint mercilessly. The saint nevertheless remained miraculously unharmed and retained his godly, angelic appearance. Diocletian was convinced that all of St. George's miracles were done by magic. He, therefore, called upon Athanasius the magician to break this magic. 
Athanasius held two vials in his hands. If the saint drank the first one, he would go insane. If he drank the second one, he would die. The saint took the first vial and said a prayer. He drank its contents, and there was no effect. Diocletian still believed that George was a magician. However, Athanasius realized the strength of God and confessed his belief in the Christian God. Athanasius was immediately executed by Diocletian's order. After seeing the miracles of St. George, Diocletian's wife, the Empress Alexandra, also confessed her belief in Christ. Diocletian imprisoned her. St. George was returned to prison and dreamt that Christ told him that he would receive the crown of martyrdom, and life eternal. Once again, George appeared before Diocletian, who ordered that St. George accompany him to the temple to sacrifice to the gods. When they arrived at the temple, St. George made the sign of the cross, and the idols were immediately destroyed. The people and the priests were furious and demanded the Diocletian have the saint executed. St. George was taken out of the city and beheaded. Much earlier in the life of St. George, a dragon threatened the idolaters in the region of Italia. The people were forced to live inside the walls of their city, which prevented them from tending their fields and grazing their sheep. Every year they would sacrifice two sheep to the dragon. After many animals had been sacrificed to this monster, it demanded to eat people instead. The ones offered up to the dragon were always young women, chosen by lots. Once the very daughter of the king of Italia was chosen to die, and no one would agree to take her place. When George arrived in this area, the king's daughter was just about to be sacrificed. To save the damsel in distress, St. George placed a rope around the dragon's neck, subduing the beast. He then gave the rope to the princess so that she herself could lead the beast back to the city. Thence he slaughtered that terrifying creature and subsequently baptized thousands of the city's inhabitants who desired to follow Christ and the example of his servant, St. George. St. George's feast day is celebrated on April 23rd. St. George, pray to God for us.